I think that another area that concerns us when we're selecting patients is uh, what what tests we're using for PDL one. You mentioned that you use SP one forty two, Adam. Evita, is that what you're using at your institution, and do you do that uh, at your own institution, or is it a send out test? So for uh, triple negative breast cancer, we do use uh, SP142. Uh, we don't have Ventana in-house, so that one is uh, a send-out test. Uh, we only have, uh, for the purpose of pdl one testing, we only have the 22C3 by DACO. So that is the one that we uh, offered in-house. However, when we have the order for um, SP142 for uh, triple negative breast cancer, then we, uh, we send it out. There is some discussion about the fact that um, it's all in the eyes of the observer and being able to detect 1% positivity might vary a lot. What is your thought on that? Uh, it is definitely subjective. I'm not going to uh, lie about that. Um, but uh, there is a methodical um, approach to, to uh, scoring uh, these um, uh, specimens. And uh, different clone also have different way of scoring. So for example, for 22C3, we do uh, the combined positive score where you have to take into account the uh, tumor cells and the uh, uh, immune cells within the tumor and uh, with, uh, uh, outside the, uh, the tumor cells. <clears throat> uh, compared to uh, the SP142, where the uh, only thing that you're scoring is the immune cells within the tumor, um, uh, the, the tumor area. It's really interesting. I think, you know, I don't think any of us thought that there would be such a big uh, variation between different tests. And I think seeing the Keynote 355 data when it's presented will be very interesting to try and understand uh, what the correlation is between a CPS score of 10 or greater and SP 142 of 1%, um, since the, uh, you know, it, it may be that these are sort of crossover uh, interactive uh, scoring systems. Uh, one of the things about, go ahead. No, I'm going to say, I, I, I mean, I, up until, you know, six months ago, I thought it was a, a real morass. It wasn't quite clear. You know, you had these two tests with different, you know, clearly different sensitivities. But I think the data you presented at ESMO, um, where you, you looked at the, the impassion data broken down by the different antibodies, um, was quite compelling in that it really does appear that it's, that the added number of patients who are positive by, um, uh, the pembrolizumab antibody um, doesn't seem to add any additional sensitivity and that it's really the ones that are positive by both antibodies uh, that are where the real benefit of the antibody, uh, the benefit of the um, uh, checkpoint inhibitor is. I think at least that to me makes me much more comfortable um, right now in terms of the testing. The other thing I think that was really fascinating about your uh, presentation at ESMO was the fact that PD-1 testing is different depending on the uh, tissue type or where the MET is from. Like liver metastases for some reason have less. And I think that it's something to consider, at least we do now, I'm starting to. I think that if, if you know, I get a liver metastasis and it's negative, you know, I'm really thinking, is it truly negative? Um, that's a really interesting piece of data that, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but it's something that a lot of us have looked at. Yeah, I think that is interesting.